Welcome to Chasm Workspaces. In this video, we'll walk through the platform capabilities by configuring a deployed Workspaces stack for common use cases and talking through some of the more advanced features. Chasm Workspaces is a container streaming platform that handles everything from container orchestration, compute resource management, authentication, logging, and streaming of containerized user interfaces to end-user browsers. Workspaces can be used for a lot of different use cases such as virtual desktop infrastructure, browser isolation, legacy app isolation, general streaming of any Linux-based application, and custom use cases via the developer API. This video assumes you have Workspaces running and ready to configure. See our documentation or other videos on the installation of Workspaces. Notice the browser is complaining about the security of the site. This is because the default installation generates a self-signed SSL cert. See our documentation or video on using Let's Encrypt to have a valid certificate signed by a public certificate authority so that users don't get this warning. The installation automatically creates one admin and one normal user account. Let's delete the default user, change the password on the admin account, and create a few normal user accounts. Because I'm logged in as this user, I'll get prompted to log in again. We now have three test user accounts. Now let's take a look at groups. All users are automatically assigned to the all users group. Note that all users group has a priority of 1000. When group settings overlap, the group with the lowest priority takes precedent. User defined groups will have a lower priority value than the all users group. The all users group should therefore be used to define baseline configurations that should apply to all users. With that in mind, let's define some settings we want applied to all users. We'll enable two-factor authentication. This will force users to set up two-factor authentication using a TOTP compatible app such as Microsoft Authenticator or Google Authenticator. Let's set an idle session timeout for 30 minutes. With this set, a user will automatically be logged out if they do not interact with the system for 30 minutes. Now let's set the keep alive for one hour. This tells Workspaces to automatically destroy the streaming container if the user has not interacted with it for one hour. Depending on your use case, you might want to keep this longer or shorter. Workspaces automatically generates SSH keys for each user and allows the user to upload their own if they wish to override the default keys. By enabling SSH key injection, each user's SSH key is placed in the session such that they can be used for accessing remote systems. This is most useful when using Workspaces as a secure bastion host to administer remote systems. We will disable downloads, which allows users to download files from the remote workspace session to their local system. Conversely, we will allow uploads from the user's local system to the remote workspaces session. Finally, let's remove all images from the All Users group except the Chrome image, which we want available for all users for secure internet access. Now we'll create user groups for more specific settings, a management group, accounting group, and an engineering group. Moving on to the Images panel, you can see Workspaces includes a number of great images that are maintained by Chasm. We don't need all of these, so let's remove all except the Ubuntu Desktop and Chrome Browser images. We will clone the Ubuntu Desktop a few times to provide each department a new desktop. For this demonstration, they will use the same Docker image, however, you may want to build custom images. See our other videos and documentation on creating and managing custom images.
We want to create an organizational share for each group of users as well as set up storage for persistent profiles. I've SSH to the server that Workspaces is installed on. For this demonstration, I'm just creating local folders on the file system. However, you should be using a centralized file system such as AWS, EFS, NFS, SMB, Hadoop file system, or any centralized file system that can be mounted to the desired Workspaces agents. I'm going to create a folder for engineering, accounting, management, and a directory for user profiles. Workspaces uses user ID 1000 on the host for users inside containers, so the folder created must be owned by UID 1000. Workspaces controls which shares users have access to based on group membership. Back on the images panel in Workspaces, I'm going to define volume mappings for the organizational shares. The first field is the location on the host, followed by the target location inside the Workspaces container. The mode defines read-only or read-write. UID and GID should be set to 1000. Finally, the required field tells Workspaces to fail a session creation if the share is inaccessible. Workspaces checks that each volume be mapped is accessible before attempting to create the container. If the target location is not accessible and the volume mapping is marked as not required, the container will be created without the volume mapping. Next we will define persistent profile settings on the image. Each image should have a unique location in the persistent profile path. Note the username tag which will be replaced by the username for each respective user. Let's have a look at some of the other image settings. CPU cores, RAM, GPU settings allow you to set the resource constraints. A centralized Docker registry can be used. Chasm managed images are in Docker Hub, as you can see in the registry setting. Workspaces constantly checks for updates in the registry and downloads new versions of the image when available. Images can be assigned specific Docker networks. If none is specified, the default Workspaces network is used. If specified, an instance of the image will only be created on an agent with the name Docker network. Images can be confined to a specific agent or zone. Let's rename the Chrome image used for browser isolation to secure internet access. The next panel we will configure is the web filter policy. When users access the internet from inside Chasm workspaces, it will apply this policy, which can consist of a whitelist, blacklist, or URL categorization. URL categorization is not available on the community edition. However, white and blacklisting are. For this demonstration, we will enable categorization and block auction sites. Web filter policies can be applied to a group or directly to images. Now that the web filter and images are defined, we can go back to the groups and finish out their definitions. First, we'll go to the All Users group and apply the web filter policy. Next, we'll remove the images we created from the All Users group. Now we want to give the Management, Engineering, and Accounting groups access to their respective images. To test things out, we'll add a user to a group. Our installation is mostly configured, but before we take it for a test drive, let's quickly run through the other panels to learn a little bit about their functionality. Zones can be used for large deployments by virtually splitting the infrastructure for different purposes. For example, zones can be used for security to more easily delineate resources and ensure only authorized users have access to specific zones. Zones can also be used to manage geographic regions. For example, you may want to run a stack in US East, Europe, and direct users to the closest region. Agents are nodes where the end user streaming containers are provisioned. 
Workspaces can manage clusters of agents and even automatically scale the agents in AWS and DigitalOcean, with more cloud providers coming soon. Agents can be deployed on physical hardware or virtual machines in your data center or in the cloud. The Agents tab allows you to quickly see the compute resources available and adjust their settings. The Edit option allows you to enable and disable agents. This is useful for updating the operating system of the agents. Disabling the agent will not provision any more users to the system. However, existing sessions will continue to function. Once all sessions have drained from the system, you can then update the system and bring it back online by enabling it. The RAM and CPU override options allow you to tell the platform how much RAM or CPU cores the system has rather than using the physical RAM or cores. This is useful for tuning resource allocation calculations. By default, CASA makes a one-to-one -one calculation. If an agent has four CPUs and an image is set to two cores, the agent will only be able to provision two instances of that image no matter how much RAM you have. When you have agents with high core counts, it makes more sense to override the CPU core count, especially if the system has a high RAM to CPU ratio. Each deployment is different and the workload of users may vary, therefore it is a good idea to adjust the CPU override settings over time. The default setting of 1 to 1 is very conservative. RAM override, on the other hand, should be considered with much greater care. We will have a video that covers system requirements and resource allocation in more detail. Session casting is a new feature that allows you to provide users with a simple URL that will put them directly into a Workspaces streaming session with or without authentication. Staging is also a new feature. This allows you to define pre-staged sessions. If you use Chasm Workspaces, you already know it's fast, but by configuring staging, you can make Workspaces sessions establish almost immediately. The branding feature allows you to set custom branding throughout the platform to include images, logos, titles, and system messages. The branding feature is only available on the Enterprise tier. The Developer API allows you to do nearly anything with our platform. This feature is only available on the Enterprise and Community Edition tiers. Workspaces supports authentication via LDAP and can map Chasm groups to Active Directory groups. Workspaces also support SAML authentication and can be configured with multiple identity providers. Chasm has built-in logging, whether deployed to a single server or 100 servers, all systems in the stack send logs to their respective manager. Chasm can then send those logs to a central logging solution such as Splunk. For smaller deployments, you can rely on the built-in logging mechanism, which utilizes the Postgres database. By default, Workspaces is configured with a log retention policy of 4 hours for debug logs and 7 days for all other logs. Now that we've gone over most of the features, let's log in as Jack, the accountant, and see what the user would experience. Since Jack has not set up two-factor authentication, I will need to set that up. Simply take a picture of the barcode with the Google Authenticator app, and it will start displaying a random token every 60 seconds. Now that I have the token set up, I can log in. Jack only has access to the accounting desktop and the remote browser. Let's create an instance of the desktop and test out some of the features that we configured. Let's open up the file manager and test that the organizational shares are working. Now we'll go to eBay and see if our web filter is blocking auction sites. Let's create a favorite link to test out persistent profiles. And now we'll destroy our workspaces session and create a new one to test that the persistent profiles are working. And there's our favorite on the toolbar. If we look at the control panel, we'll see that the Downloads button is missing. This is because we disabled downloads for all users.
Let's test uploading a file to the remote session. Thank you for watching this training video. Be sure to visit www.chasmweb.com/resources.html or our YouTube channel for updated videos on other topics.